Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This is Shadowfury CC3, bringing you a match between Shadowfury CC3 and D Deebs on Isis Delta. This is a match I played about a week, two weeks ago, and D Deebs requested that I. I think he requested that I cast it. He wanted to see it anyway. So, I'm doing it now, and let us begin. So as is traditional for the way I cast games where I played, I shall be casting myself in the third person. When I say me, I'm referring to myself right now in the present, speaking to you. And if I say Shadow Fury 3 I'm referring to myself 16 days ago, the idiot who was playing this game so incompetently that I can't believe I'm even doing this. Anyhow, let us begin. So d -Deebs is starting out in the west side of the map, playing spiders! And Shadow Fury is in the east side of the map, also playing spiders, very quickly morphing his commander. And Deebs not more his commander quickly at all. Getting instead a very quick laser tower. Quite paranoid, not sure why he's going for that quickly. You don't need a laser tower that quickly. You need to get a couple metal extractors first. Because the laser tower, you want to have... Ideally, you'd want to have the laser tower right as your opponent... Finished, right as your opponent's attackers are coming into your base. Now, it's kind of hard to predict when it's going to happen. Because Zero Crate is a rather flexible game and what your opponent can do. So, typically, you'd want to do it after a couple metal extractors are done... Maybe three, depending on the size and layout of the map. But on Isis Delta, I'd say at least two metal extractors. Now, Shadow Fury, on the other hand, sending in about a dozen fleas, getting some metal extractors, getting wind generators around them as well, though it's a little bit low for wind generators. As you can see, the map, it's not that high. It's off the water, yes, but it's not that far off the water. So, that's really not saying much. Still, it's something. It is fairly cheap, and it's still getting better than one. If it gets better than plus one, it's worth it compared to solar generators. On the other hand, it is a forward set, so it's kind of hard to say whether or not it's worth it. Anyhow, on the other hand, we see the DDs is going very quickly for Venoms instead of any fleas on his own, and Shadow Fury wasn't quite sure. The thing is, on the start, both players could have started along either... Like, DDs could have started anywhere along this area of the map here, and Shadow Fury could have started anywhere along this area of the map here. So it was really just a question of what part of this map were they starting on, and Shadow Fury wasn't sure, so he set up fleas everywhere, while DDs hasn't even started to scout yet, surprisingly enough. And DDs is getting rid of all of Shadow Fury's fleas. As we can see, the Venom, this version does in fact have damage, unlike the game we saw last... well, last game, which was from at least a month or two ago. This is recent enough that the Venoms do have damage, and that's that means a lot here. Now, Venom is coming in from Shadow Fury as well, and that's going to be probably beating Dee's Venom, but it really it comes down to who gets the first shot, because whoever gets the first shot will be able to probably stun out the other, and it looks like Dee's Venom is actually completely bypassing, going along the cliff face, avoiding Shadow Fury's completely, and Shadow Fury's going along the shallows instead. And the fleas doing nothing. Shadow Fury, however, now is aware of where Deebs is set up, or more or less aware. Setting up more and more fleas, getting some venoms as well of his own, some more venoms of his own. Might be having too many fleas at this point. I mean, against the venoms, it's really hard to make fleas work out. If you split them up nicely, it will work, but it's hard to do. And a Stardust coming up for Deebs. Now, this is... You don't see Stardust very frequently. It looks like as you can see, like I mentioned before, the, the Venom, it really comes down to who shoots first. And d Deebs hit Shadow Fury first, so Shadow Fury's Venom is going down. So that is... That's it for that Venom. It's basically dead. Even with the, the Flea support coming in, might be able to help out. But it's hard to say. And at the same time, d Deebs' Venom is attacking Shadow Fury's Wind Generators. He's abandoned construction of that for the moment, moving the Weaver out of the way so it doesn't get caught up. And it looks like the Fleas have distracted the Venoms enough... These Venoms enough that they can be counterattacked. however, only one of the Venoms going down, the other Venom finished off by the Stardust. Not the most economical way to go, Shadow Fury is kind of behind in terms of economic efficiency, but he is ahead in terms of raw economy. 13 metal and 20 energy to 9 metal and 10 energy, DDs really needs to expand more, he is not focused at all on economy, much more on defense. And in fact, right now he could easily expand, and I'm a bit surprised he isn't doing so. He is building more units, yes, he is getting... Recluses as well as Venoms, but he needs to be building up more metal extractors, and he's just now doing that. Still behind compared to Shadow Fury now. Shadow Fury, on the other hand, very cleverly surrounding this Venom to avoid it getting stunned out, avoid all the fleas getting stunned out, and it, it will be going down, but DD on the other hand, very cleverly avoiding that surround. Not quite enough, but still he had the right idea getting out of the way so that the 
the fleas would end up clumping again just automatically. Shadowfear continuing to build more and more fleas. And really enjoying... Well, okay, obviously enjoying the north side of the map. The thing is, in this map, with spiders, you want to play the north side of the map. The south side of the map is great for... Well, it's decent for vehicles and would be great for land bots. Well, non-spider bots. But the north side of the map is the spider bot territory. It's the only reason why DDBs and Shadow Fury are both playing spiders in this map is because of this north section here, which spiders can exploit to no end. But which, say, cloaks and shield bots exploit with a finite end. And in fact, a fairly small end, too. It's not particularly useful. You can kind of go up here and set up some defenses, but really it's... This ramp is all you have, unless you're playing spiders. And DDB is trying to do what he can to just zone out this area of the map here, trying to make sure that these Venoms are just in place to stop anything from attacking. Now, one of the Venoms nearly stunned itself out, which may in fact help Shadow Fury at this point. In fact, it could very well do so. That Venom is just about into a clump, and there is a clump that DDB has made, but it's it has actually stunned out. Shadow Fury is managing to stun out all these Venoms in this clump. That is not doing well for DDB. Now, DDB is getting some recluses out. And with those, he will have a much easier time. Let's see, he was getting recluses out. He might have aborted that, actually. I'm not sure where they are. Oh, there it is. The recluse has retreated, not going to support its venoms. Not a terrible idea, seeing as the venoms have been destroyed by that surround of Shadow Fury's venoms and fleas. Now, at this point, DD is still behind an economy, and I'm surprised he isn't going for fleas of his own, at least to distract the venoms, if nothing else. Big Shadow Fury has been doing them to distract the venoms, and he actually has. He has two fleas that could upgrade into Glaze if he wanted to. It's a little bit risky because of the fact that it would mean they can't use this top, but they could morph into Glaives and then into Warriors. And Warriors, as I mentioned last game, are a great support for Venoms. Fleas are nowhere near as good of a support as Warriors could be, so Shadow Fury is making a bit of a mistake there. At this point, it's not doing him too much damage, but it is still a bit of a mistake. And this Stinger is up and running as well. Like I said, DD is very focused on defense, very focused on defending this corridor as well, which is surprising given that this north side of the map can be very easily traversed by spiders, and he hasn't sent a weaver up there to build defenses. It's rather surprising, honestly. Rather odd. As we can see, Shadow Fury is getting up some hermits now. Probably because he saw the stinger here and just deciding to go for the hermits to counter that. Because hermits can take a decent amount of damage from the stinger, and they can rush in and deal damage enough. The recluses aren't a great counter, because recluses... The thing with recluses is that they don't have a whole lot of... Well... Basically, they don't have a whole lot of damage potential from outside of range. They can't... Their, their range is equivalent to a Stinger, or very, very, very close to it. It's basically a little bit shorter than a Stinger, so it's not worth it. Now, Recluses have been built for Shadow Fury. He is going, actually, with them towards the north from the looks of it. And... Okay, there he is. He's going towards the north with them, sending up Unit Recluses up to... Probably just to hold this line here, just to have a bit of a defense. Make sure nothing happens. Well, the Venoms are coming in to actually deal with the main base. Now, Recluses from DDBs are coming in to take that out. And that's going to be a bit of a problem. Actually, if you don't... Just... I'm going to just... Sorry, just bear with me for one second. I... Unfortunately, on account of some small issues, I had to take this on a local copy of the engine. So if you bear with me for one second, I'm just going to make it a bit more readable. Because I have a couple settings that I forgot to set up. So I'll deal with that, and... Okay, that's fine. So I just want to make sure that the selected units are very obvious, which ones are selected, which ones aren't. Because there's a new thing that they added to deal with this. Okay, this is... Ah, here we are. Okay, got it. Oh. Hmm. Well... Ah, there we go. Alright, got it. Sorry about that. 
or not quite. Returning to your programming shortly, I just have a small technical thing to deal with, and once that is dealt with, then we shall be back in. Okay, there we go. That'll be sufficient. Sorry about that. Let's continue. So you can see, just make sure that it's obvious who is selected by what player. So yeah, at this point, Shadow Fury is dealing quite a bit of damage to this... Oh, sorry, Crazy Hitting pointing out that the widget setting was set... No, this version actually does have that widget setting, it's just that I had to use my local version of the replay since there are, I don't mean to say it, but there are a couple server issues right at the moment. It's not a big deal, it just means replays are a bit more reliably, a re they're a bit more reliable to load locally than they are to load off the server. So I'm using a local version of the engine, I hadn't quite set it up as completely as I would have for the version that I use primarily for casting. Anyhow, regardless, Shadow Fury is setting up, he does have a bit of a trap laid for DD's commander, setting up some hermits, playing with hermits, as well as the recluses that were over on the other side of the river that were holding this line just to make sure nothing can come in, and they are successful in making sure nothing can come in. Getting rid of DD's commander, how, are trying to anyway, these venoms are coming in, and they might, no, not able to deal with that, and actually getting destroyed by the destruction of the commander, and the recluses are killing the hermit, that, the hero hermit there, well, at any rate, it is a hero hermit, as you can see, the nice little star on it, just for its heroics, killing that commander. And now, that commander is open for the picking. So Shadow Fury will probably be munching on that fairly soon. But in the meantime, he's going to try to deal with this. Sending in some police to try to distract that laser, but to no avail. And his hermits are really what he wanted to have to attack that laser, the stinger here. But it's not going to be that effective with only one. He kind of needs a few more just to distract it, get in, deal some damage. Be able to take a hit or two. And the Rexus is trying to do what they can to deal with these melee strikers doing a good job of it too. And these Rexus down here have a major terrain disadvantage. As we can see, the Rexuses on the ground are not going to be able to... Actually, well, actually, neither player is doing that great for Rexus. The missiles are hitting everything but the opponent's units. Except Shredder Fury now has a terrain advantage, getting rid of another metal extractor, and the Rexuses are taking more damage as well. So Shadow Fury ultimately winning this Recluse fight even if it is rather with difficulty. And DDB's just about to lose that Recluse. Stinger going down. No, Stinger not going down. I want to say Stinger taking down a Recluse. But Shadow Fury is able to maintain control of the north side of the map on DDB's side. Now, DDB, once again, has not continued to expand. While Shadow Fury has been expanding quite extensively along the side of the map. So DDB's at this point has a major disadvantage. He has six metal to 25 and no energy whatsoever. Having lost his commander, his commander. Had at least one energy cell on it, and only one energy cell. And no more metal, no more power plants have been built. So DDB's, assuming he was asking for analysis and we want me to go over this replay, big thing, need more economy. You need a lot more economy. And it looks like DDB's has surrendered. That is game. So yes, more economy, that is extremely important. Very, very, very important that you have more economy. Doesn't matter how much economy you have, you always want more economy. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching, and that'll be it for tonight. I apologize for the short technical delay in the middle of that cast there. And thank you for watching. Good night, everybody.